Get in the boat. Captain Granville, are you all right? Now, Grandpa? Get in. Captain Granville, are you all right? Those wet clothes off, that'll help. What does it look? Bad. Start making shelter. You go with her. Do you have what Rachel says? Hyperthermia? Looks like he does. What's that? Means his body temperature is too low. We have to get it back up. He's not shivering anymore. Is that a good sign? No. It means he's too cold to shiver. Oh, Grandpa! Grandpa, are you gonna be okay? Grandpa. How can we get him warm? Body heat. You've got to get inside the blankets with him. I'll do it. No, Ramon, you and Arthur are bigger. You do it. Huh? Let's go, you guys. Can I? Come on, Arthur. We have to sandwich him between us both and get his body temperature back up. in front of him. Okay, just wrap around him. Okay, hold him, wrap around him. I could build a fire. Right, good. We'll dry his clothes off. Okay, hold him. Okay. He's cold. He's gonna keep getting colder, too, on the inside. Get close to him. Will he be all right? If he doesn't get too much colder. What happens then? Water. Everything's soaked. Go for the dead branches at the bottom of the tree. They stay dry in the rain. CT, what are you doing that for? This makes it burn better. get a fire started in the rain. Birch bark burns even when it's wet, Rachel. Watch. See? Good work. 
York CT. Ah, careful, Arthur, with my hand. Sorry. Ramon, let me see your hand. Oh, that's a bad rope burn. I held on to his lifeline when he fell overboard. We gotta get that cleaned up. He moved. Captain Granville? Grandpa? Hey, let's put this under his head. Grandpa? CT. Okay. Everybody okay? The boat? Everything's fine. How do you feel? Mm. Mm. Okay, we can move into the shelter now. Boy, when the tide goes out around here, it really goes out. Uh-oh. Hey, you guys, come here. What is it? Check this out. Opened up a seam. That's where the water came in. If we don't get this fixed before the tide rises, this boat's not going to be rising with it. I better go get the coffee stuff. I told Arthur to try and raise somebody on the radio. There's got to be something on the other side of those woods. How's your hand? OK. I'll take CT, see if we can find a house or something. Good. I'll stay with the captain. Now, on the way back, we just head a course due east. 180 degrees in the opposite direction we've been going. That'll put us right back in camp. What are you doing? Blazing a trail for the trip back. Good idea. A backup for the compass, huh? In case my reading's a little off. Yep. You know what you're doing. My dad taught me. What? My dad taught me. You almost done? Yeah. That's good, because the tide is coming in. Lots of people go swimming in the summer. We went swimming. We didn't get hypothermia. Well, after your grandpa fell in the water, he never got dry. His clothes were soaked, and the wind made him even colder. He was exhausted. His body couldn't take it. He went into shock. His heartbeat slowed way down. Finally, he passed out. How did his temperature go? 85, 90 degrees. Could die. If his temperature went too much lower, yes, he would have. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is the sailing vessel Mimi on the Coast Guard. Can you read me? Please come in. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is the Mimi. Does anybody read me? This is the sailing vessel Mimi calling the Coast Guard. Can you read me? Please come in. Ah, it's no use. Come on, you stupid radio. Hey, how's it going? Dead, dead, dead. So come up and help us. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got to take this radio back and see if I can fix it. Come on. Can't climb with that hand. 
Okay, but be careful. Be careful now. Look for anything. A road, a church steeple. Parker. Anything? We're on an island. An, an island. island? There's no roads. There's no houses. You guys didn't find anything? Can't even see the mainland. How are we going to get out of here? The ship's radio is shot. There's no way we can get help. And the captain is sick. The boat is in no shape to sail, and we haven't got enough food. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to take things one at a time, just like we've been doing. Now, the captain is going to be fine. And we have food, and we have shelter, and we're out of danger. Now, Arthur, tell me about the radio. Can you fix it? I don't know. I can try. Don't worry. It's going to be OK. You think Eric will mind if I borrowed some pots from his receiver? Under the circumstances, I think he'd forgive you. How's the captain doing? Much better. We dried everything out by the fire. All he needs now is a little rest. Hey, the whale tag receiver. It's working. I can't believe it. The whale. picking up the signal from our whale. Yeah, our whale's right out there somewhere. Yeah, right near us. Yeah, but where's that? We don't even know where we are. different kinds of environments, like cold. I visited Dr. Murray Hamlet. He's the chief of the cold division. It hits the ground and when Dr. Hamlet told me he was taking me into the through. Arctic wind tunnel, so cold, I was a little worried. But he said it was a good way to learn about how our bodies regulate heat. Temperature. First, he had to wire me up with little temperature measuring devices called thermistors. And, uh, we'll measure your skin temperature as we go into the chamber, and I'll show you uh, how your skin temperature changes associated with your cold exposure. Uh -huh, but I thought your temperature was always 98.6. Well, it is over the, the central part of your body, the, the, the torso, your core of your body. 
but over the periphery, the arms and legs, the temperature will vary quite significantly depending on how you're exposed. The way your system works is that you produce heat, the muscles and, and organs in your body burning glucose and oxygen. You mean food? Yes, food that you eat is converted to glucose, sugar, and it goes to the cells along with oxygen and it's burned mm -hmm. and it's the same kind of chemical process that involved in any burning process. And that heat is moved around your system by warming the blood and the warm blood moves out and that's the way you move heat. From the core where it's warm out to the radiating surfaces in your skin. Now, as you, if you were to go and exercise, go outside or go someplace and exercise, the muscles in your legs and your arms would produce a lot of heat. That heat warms up the blood, and the blood going back to your brain, there's a mechanism in your brain, a little center in your brain that mm -hmm. controls your body temperature very precisely. And what happens is that sends a message from your brain down your arm and out to, all the way out to your skin and all the way out to your fingers and all the way out to your toes mm -hmm. that it wants to get rid of your body heat. So what it does is it opens up the blood vessels in your skin. It opens your radiators so that the heat now flows in the blood out here to the skin. Your skin warms up and you radiate that heat away from your body. And as you do that, your core temperature goes down. When we go in the cold, just the opposite thing occurs. It sends a message and tells it to, to keep the heat in? To hold the heat in. So it does that by shutting off the radiators. The message the skin, there's nerves in the skin that send a message to your brain, to the center again, that says it's cold out here. And that message then goes back down and shuts off the blood vessels in your skin, which conserves the heat here in the core of your body. So it's When we checked the three thermistors, we found the temperatures were not all the same. The one on my finger showed only 88 degrees. The one on my arm was a little warmer at 89 degrees. And the one on my chest was 92 degrees. Dr. Hamlet explained that your temperature is lower the further from the core you measure it. Even the one on my chest was lower than 98.6 degrees because it was out on the skin. Let's, uh, let's get you ready and take you in the Arctic chamber. Oh, wait a minute. The Arctic chamber? How cold is it going to get in there? Well, it's about 30 degrees right now, but it's getting colder all the time. <laughs> so we yeah. better get started. This place is like a giant refrigerator. Yeah, it is a refrigerator, Ben. It uh, goes can go down to minus 70, and we, it's also a wind tunnel. We can crank the wind up real fast in here, too. Why don't you sit down here, and we'll, we'll go really through this quickly. cold. <laughs> sit here? Yep, sit down right there. Let me get my jacket on here so that I don't oh, okay. freeze. It is getting a little brisk. It's getting colder all the time, too. Uh, what's going to happen is that your hand temperature and your arms are going to decrease in temperature because mm -hmm. your body is conserving its core heat. That is, it's shutting off blood flow to your extremities to maintain function in your core. So, but my core temperature will stay the same. Core temperature will stay the same. I have another thermistor here. We can measure your core temperature. Now, it's not going to be 98.6 because there is some cooling occurring in your neck, but it, it is fairly close. Nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two. This one, right? The one on your fingertip. It's down to uh, 63 degrees. So that's really dropped a long way. <laughs> if we look at number three, that's a little warmer. That's this one, remember? That's about 75 or 6 degrees. OK? Number four, the one that's on your chest, is about 90 degrees, All right? If we look at number five, the one in your mouth, the oral one, that's going to be about 97 or 98 degrees. So that, your core temperature is being maintained at the expense of your extremities. Mm -hmm. If you look at the goosebumps on your arm, here, we can take this out. You don't need to okay. do this anymore. If you look at the goosebumps on your arm, that's from when you used to have, when man used to have hair on his body. It raises the hair. You mean a lot of hair. A lot like of a hair. Like a monkey. Like a monkey. Raises the hair up very straight and makes a better insulator, but you don't have many hair anymore, so those are, that's just kind of worthless. Now you're shivering, yeah. and shivering, <laughs> shivering's a form of involuntary exercise that produces heat, and that heat is what's gonna warm you up. But the only way it's gonna warm you up right now, because it's so cold in here, is if we put a jacket on you to help insulate you a little bit more, okay? <laughs> Let me get a, an army parka here. Ah. Ah. <laughs> All right, now, what do you think's happening now? 
the coat's keeping me warm. Sure, the coat's keeping you warm because you're producing the heat, but the insulation is holding that heat, that still warm air layer next to your body. Let's put the hat on you here. You lose a lot of heat through your head. Grandmother used to tell me you put your hat on, your feet, will, feet and hands will be warmer, and that's exactly right. Now, we can only stay in here a short time because we just don't have enough clothes on either of us to stay in here very long. But what I want to show you is the effect of wind. Let's get the wind cranked up in the chamber. Susan, how cold is it in here? A little less than 20. What? <laughs> All right, crank the wind up to 10 miles an hour, please. OK. Look at the anemometer. See how fast it's going now? I can right. hear it. You can Here hear it, it right? Here it comes, like a train. Whew. The temperature is the same, but what it's, what's happening is this still warm air layer that's around your body that was there is now being blown away, so you're having to produce more heat to get yourself warm. Uh -huh. If you think this is bad, however, <laughs> well, let's take your hat off and show you this. Look at this. See how much faster your face cools? Yes. Now put your hand out in the put your hand out in the breeze. Okay. Put your hand up. See how fast your fingers cool? That is really bad. Let's look back here and see how cold it's getting. Ah, oh, 45 degrees. 45 and cooling. No, I won't let you freeze. We won't get that cold. But it's really cooling in a hurry. Put your hand inside now. There you go. Let me put this back on you. If you think that's cold, however, got it? Yeah. Water will cool you 26 times faster than air of the same temperature. So when you get into cold water, you'll cool very, very fast. And that's why people who fall in the water end up hypothermic, because they lose so much heat to the, to the water that they can't possibly replace it no matter how hard they shiver or how hard they try to swim or work in the water. So is my core temperature still the same? It is right now, but it's going to start dropping fairly fast, and mine is too. So we better get out of here. Okay. Let's go. Get your core, get your wires, and get your machine, and let's get out of here. Oh. Ah. Oh. Finding ways to protect people who fall into the water is another job of the native lab. Who is that? Got me in a very nice time because I'm doing, I'm getting ready to do another uh, research experiment with Captain Nemo here. Mm -hmm. What well, we're I spent part of the afternoon with Dr. Richard Gonzalez. He's a thermophysicist who is helping to design life-saving emergency clothing. This time, I didn't have to be the guinea pig. They put the suits on a copper man they call Captain Nemo. He has heating elements inside him to heat him up like a human body. And on his copper skin are thermistors like the ones that Dr. Hamlet put on me. They're connected to a computer that can draw a graph of Captain Nemo's skin temperature. Temperature, the water in the pool is 68 uh, degrees. Not very cold, 68. but water takes heat well, away good. so but fast, computer, it's plenty cold right enough to give now. someone hypothermia, yeah. someone who's unprotected. <laughs> Bye, Nemo. We dunked Captain Nemo for 15 minutes to see how much he would cool. We then compared that test to one where Captain Nemo didn't have anything yeah. on at all. Okay, On the grass, the time goes from left to right, and the temperature is up and down. Um, the nude guy, after just t 10 minutes, was the same temperature as the water was, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And the guy with the suit on, after 10 minutes, was only 89 degrees Fahrenheit. So you'd be a lot better off in a suit. That's right. What about if Captain Granville had had a suit like that on, well, he never would have gotten hypothermia. Captain Nemo doesn't have any clothes on, but what would happen if he had normal clothes? What would his temperatures be? Well, Ben, the clothes that you and I are wearing, they don't offer that much protection. As you can see, the survival suit here both keeps the heat within the skin and doesn't allow the water to get to the skin. When we have uh, regular clothing, it gets so wet that it happens is that the skin temperature and the water temperature are almost the same as you have in the nude. After I left Captain Nemo, Dr. Hamlet showed me some friends who didn't seem to worry about hypothermia, even in 
40 degree water. If water cools your skin 26 times more than air does, they uh, should be frozen to death. Well, sure, they would if they didn't have the feathers. And the feathers provide insulation from the water. But to keep the feathers from getting wet, they have oil in them. They have a gland over their tail. They get the oil on their beak, mm -hmm. and they run it through their feathers. It keeps the feathers dry. So they're never really wet. The wet water never touches their skin, except on their feet. Is this a down feather? Yeah, this is a goose feather. Uh, the down, the feathers on the, duck, on the goose or duck protect him. They lay like, like uh, shingles on a, on a roof to, to trap air underneath them to keep them from getting cold. Some whales live in Arctic waters, and it's a lot colder than this, but they survive. Sure, they have a tremendous thickness of blubber, fat over their body, over their organs, and this blubber is a good insulator. Plus, he's a very, very large animal, and a very large mass with a small surface area cools slower than something with a large surface area and a small mass. You have a lot of surface area to your body in relation to your mass, to how much you, uh, roughly how much you weigh. And that's why when you go in the water with all this surface area, you cool very fast, whereas the whale is essentially just a round ball, uh, very, very round, and he would cool very slowly in the water. But the boat well, is it's nice to learn about how my body is constantly working to maintain my core temperature. But at the end of this day, I look forward to one thing, getting warm again. Bye!